Brake fluid flush. I'm sure we've all heard it. I'm sure we all haven't done it. Why do I have to do it and how do I do it? This is your brake fluid reservoir. It holds all your brake fluid. It also attaches to your master cylinder. When you step on the brakes, it forces brake fluid with hydraulic pressure to all four calipers giving you good braking capability. Brake fluid is hygroscopic with a G, which means that it absorbs moisture over time. As your brake fluid goes through heat cycles, it can absorb moisture. That's why they recommend servicing your brake fluid every two years or 30,000 miles, depending on driving circumstances. Now, Alec, how do we test for water in our brake fluid? Well, it's a good thing that you asked. Right here, I have a brake fluid water tester. And you can see here, it's got a little green light. That's for 0%. We have less than 1%, 2 3%, and greater than 4 3% and greater than 4% is a necessary flush. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this device, dip it down into our fluid, give it a touch, and look at that. As we dip down, we're at 3% moisture content in this brake fluid, all the way up to the red. So Alec, the brake fluid's dirty, but how do I flush it? You're full of good questions today. So there's a couple options. You can fill up the bottle, and then you can just gravity bleed, which means you go to each brake caliper, crack it loose until you see clean fluid. You can do the same procedure, but you can take a fluid extractor with a rubber hose and slip it over the bleed nipple on the caliper, or you can take this fancy device like I got from y Stool, which is a pressurized brake fluid bottle and this little catch can. You fill this up with whatever brake fluid meets the specs for the car, you pressurize it with this pump, attach the fitting to the bottle, then you take this little catch can, hang it onto the nipple, crack the bleeder loose, and then work your way around all four calipers till you get clean fluid. Thinking we should take these wheels and tires off to get a little bit better look at the calipers. Let's do that. We can start by taking off the brake fluid cap. In this car in particular, there's a filter down underneath this cap, and I'll pull it out so I can show you. So this little pre-filter is the first step in preventing any contamination of the brake fluid. Some people like to evacuate the reservoir. I'm gonna pull a little bit of fluid just to show you, but I never really like to drain it too far because then you can be introducing an air bubble into your system. Now at this point, you can either top it off with fresh fluid and begin the gravity bleed if you're doing it that way, but for me, I'm just gonna put my fitting on and then I'm going to attach my brake bleeder tool. And this should be able to fill the bottle as we're bleeding it so we shouldn't have any issues with running out of fluid. What we're going to do is put some PSI into the system. Roughly about 30 PSI. See, after I attached that brake bleeder tool, it filled our bottle back up to our mark. So it'll regulate the fluid level for you. Now this next part is the easy part. Just locate the brake bleeder nipple, which usually has a brake sensor attached to it on two of the four wheels. And we're going to be starting at the farthest away bleeder from the master cylinder, which in this case is the passenger rear. For you European folks across the pond, it's probably going to be the rear left. You just got to take the right size wrench, get on the bleeder nipple, break it loose, and it only takes about a quarter turn. So you can see we're starting to get some nice dirty fluid in there. I'm probably going to try to fill up this bottle all the way between all four brakes, so maybe about a fourth of the way each caliper. All right, we got a good amount of fluid there. I'd call that about one fourth of the bottle. So now all we have to do is take our nine millimeter wrench and just snug this bleeder screw back down. Also, don't be alarmed if you're seeing any drips coming off of the brake caliper. As you can see down here, these brake bleeder nipples tend to leak after you crack them loose while you're bleeding. Don't worry, they'll, they'll seal up tight after you're done. And also I just popped that off, had a bunch of vacuum inside of it and so it wanted to spray out some fluid. It's always good to keep some brake cleaner handy. Now we go to the rear left, pop the cover off, throw our nipple on, break it loose. And we're flowing. Side note, you can check the fluid rate uh, just by watching it drip down the side of the bottle. Also, you can just examine the color and get a good idea as to when you're getting fresh fluid. You should also always keep an eye on the reservoir if you're doing the gravity bleed style or if you're doing it with this type of tool, always make sure that the reservoir is plenty filled and that you're getting good flow going in as you're getting flow going out. So I'd say that bottle's about halfway. Now we can take our nine mil wrench, snug down our bleeder screw, and then I'm gonna be more cautious of that spray out of the bottle this time. That's better. 
All right, off to the next. We're off to the front right. Again, just pop the bleeder cap. Throw this nipple on over the top. Crack that loose. And wait to get some more fluid. Shut this one so we got a little bit room left for the last caliper. And snug her down. Always check your bleeder screws. It's always good to double check them with a wrench. And last but not least, front left. And in my experience, the bleed times usually get shorter as you get towards the front left wheel. All right, I'd call that a full bottle. So now we can shut down our last bleeder. After we drop our wrench, ugh. bleeder is shut, nipple. Double check our bleeder one last time, make sure she's nice and snug, reroute our brake wire, and then of course, clean up after yourself. So now that all four wheels are bled, we can release the pressure in our bottle. We can disconnect our cap, and we can remove our fitting. Now our fluid clarity is spot on, it's nice and clear. I could throw the cap back on at this point, but we're gonna have an issue in the future when we do a brake service. Now the reason for this is as the brakes wear down, that piston has to push farther and farther out of the caliper in order to apply the pressure to those brake pads. When a car's brakes are low, you're gonna notice that the brake fluid is low as well. That's because that piston is sitting further out. After we do a brake flush and we have this top back up, up to the max line, if you do a brake service on this car right now with the cap on at this current fluid level, by the time you'd compress the pistons, you would have brake fluid squirting out of this cap with nowhere to go and it would be bleeding out of the top. What we need to do is evacuate some fluid and get this level about a half inch below the max. That way when we do the brake service, we'll have enough room for that fluid to push back up into the bottle and it won't spray out and make a mess all over the place. So we can put our filter back in and you don't really have to remove this, but I just wanted to show you for evacuation purposes. And now we can take our evacuator shove our hose down, and just pull a little bit of fluid. Also, this reservoir is kind of two-chambered, so after you pull some fluid, some fluid from the outside chamber is going to fill back up where this filter sits, and the level's gonna equalize. Right now, we're about quarter inch below the max. Maybe pull a little tick more, and I think with that, we should be good. I'd say that's about a half inch below the full mark. We'll throw our cap back on, and we are good to go. Check out that comparison, folks. We got brand new fluid right out of the jug, and this is the stuff that came out of my bleeder bottle. Quite a substantial difference. You can even see the clarity of it up top. I mean, it's impossible to see through, whereas this stuff you can see straight down to the bottom of the cup. Now this service isn't gonna change the drivability of the car exactly. However, you will have better peace of mind knowing that your car is serviced and you should be able to sleep at night knowing that you're taking very good care of your car the way it's supposed to be done. And of course, don't forget to go around to each wheel, check the dust cap, make sure the bleeders are tight, and make sure you cleaned up after yourself. Time to put this thing back together. Nice. You get to check your fluids every time you have the hood open. Just give your Oil, power steering fluid, cooling a good look. Now before you go ripping and racing out of your garage, get in the car, take your time, push down on the brake pedal, make sure it's feeling nice and tight. Give the car a couple test stops, make sure you didn't leave any of those bleeders loose. You should be good to go. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to check out the other videos on my channel. And as always, I'll see you on my next day off.